Hello, this is just a pilot version of a, a possible series um, about electronics and uh, working with, understanding and so forth. A few of you have asked would I do a, a talk or a waffle on this. So, <laughs> we'll have a go. Um, you seem to like the way I present things, and uh, things have changed somewhat since I was a lad, but uh, I think the basic principles are still there. As I say, it's a very large subject, and certainly can't be done in one video to ten or a hundred videos. That isn't to say that it's difficult, it's just a big subject. And like anything, the more you go into it in depth, um, it just gets longer, or larger. So, like anything, whatever it is you're building, you need good, strong foundations. And without foundations, um, things are going to fall down. So, a little bit of theory. Don't run away. I shan't frighten you. Um, and I'm telling you, as sort of I, as I know it, uh, my knowledge. I'm not saying I'm an expert and so forth, but... Um, this is what I can remember anyway. So, I've been asked about, uh, well, where do we start? Uh, the question initially was about uh, uh, AC and DC voltages and so forth. Well, let's, let's start with what comes out of the socket of, uh, of the wall in your house. Uh, I'm guessing it's going to be AC, that's alternating voltage and current. Let's draw a graph. This, this line represents time. At this point, there is no time, it's the start. And this point, where I'll put an arrow, is time continuing. This could be milliseconds, minutes, months, years, forever. It's time. And against time, we'll draw that. And this is voltage, or current, and at the top, at this top piece, we'll call that positive, and at the bottom we'll call that negative. In the middle, here, there's nothing. It's in between negative and positive. Think of it like your bank balance. Up here, you're very, very rich. Down here, you're broke. And down here, you're in debt. Got it? <laughs> okay, I said it's simple, didn't I? So we'll start at a point in time and alternating current and voltage coming out of your so socket is what it says alternating and it's a sinusoidal wave and it starts off and rises, gets to a peak, come back down to zero, continues to go, peaks and go back to zero again. That is one cycle. That is one positive peak and one negative peak. I think it's called Hertz nowadays, but it used to be called Cycles in my day. And AC voltage continues this, like so, and goes on and on. And in the UK, this is 50 complete cycles per second. So there are 50 of those every second. It is voltage and current going positive and negative every second. In the US, I think you have, and it's called frequency, and that's the frequency of the mains. In the US, I believe it's 60 cycles. So there are 60 of those in one second. Um, so we've got more energy because we've got 60 as opposed to the UK where we've only got 50. But the voltage in the UK is about 240 volts. And I believe the voltage in America is about 110, 115. I believe. And that's about that figure. And in the UK, that is plus 240 volts. From that point to zero. But it also goes 240 volts negative. There's our 240 volts negative. 
You will notice that I haven't drawn this line at the crest of the sinusoidal wave. Why is that? Well, this is the, the useful part of the energy. It is the RMS, the root mean squared, of that voltage. But in actual fact, if, if we measured it with, not with a meter, I'll describe why in a moment, but with an oscilloscope, on the mains, we would find that the voltage actually climbs higher than 240 volts. But it's for a very short period of time, that's time, a very tiny amount, but a short period of time. So it doesn't have a lot of energy, these little peaks, but they do exist, and we need to know that they're there if we're going to do calculations. So, what is this figure? Well, it's Sorry for the hiccup. My wife just told me I was wanted on the phone. Some plonker wanted to sell me insurance, so... Well, I told him what I thought about his uh, unsolicited calls, and he doesn't want to sell me insurance now. So here's a wiser guy. Now, where was I? Where was I? RMS, root mean squared. OK, so... We haven't got the maximum voltage here. In the UK, as I said, it's 2, 240. So, this value is 0 0.707. So, it's not the full value of, of uh, 240 volts. Or put another way, RMS equals 1.414, I think it is. So, if we add, or multiply 1.414 to 240 volts, we find our actual peak voltage up here is somewhere in the region of about 330, 340 volts. About 340 volts. And in the US, assuming you've got, assuming you've got 110, uh, multiply that by 1.414 comes out at about 100 and, 150, 150, 160 volts, which may or may not surprise you. Anyway, we'll bear that in mind. So, DC, of course, comes out continuously. There are no peaks. The voltage we get with DC remains the same, depending on what load we apply to it. But uh, AC voltage is very handy. It means the incandescent bulb is trying to go on and off 50 times every second. Uh, but we don't see that, and the little element inside hasn't got time to react and persistence of vision we can't see the difference but it is used that frequency is very handy and it is used often in synchronous motors where the motor is synchronized to the frequency of the power supply this often determines the speed that motors will run at hence the electric clocks are pretty good at keeping time they're not as good as these radio uh, updated things but uh, it's pretty good and it does allow the power station to slightly alter the frequency to try and keep them on time okay let's move away a little bit from AC that's one brick of our foundation The next brick we need to put in our foundations, and it's one that uh, we can't leave out, it's a, it's a keystone, if you like, the cornerstone to our foundations, and it's Ohm's Law. I personally had a great deal of trouble trying to understand this, um, not being very bright. The school I went to was pretty rubbishy. I was in the bottom class, and bottom of the class. <laughs> Teacher said I was a numbskull. 
Oh, it's forever getting a clip round the ear. And uh, the only thing I learned from school was how to duck quick. <laughs> so, Ohm's Law. I don't quite know at the moment just the best way to put this across easily and easily remembered and in an entertaining way. Uh, so just bear with me for a minute. Ohm's Law is the relationship of a voltage, and voltage is always expressed as V, across a resistor, and a resistor is always represented by R, and as a result it's the current, and the current is shown as I. C isn't used as C is used for capacitance, uh, that will be explained later on. So we have voltage, resistance and current. Uh, Ohm's law states that voltage equals IR, or when I went to school, voltage equals I times R. Okay? But that can also be written in two other forms. It could be written R equals V over I, or it could also be written I equals V over R. Oh, I had to think for a minute. <laughs> they all do the same thing, but what it means is that by applying, let's use another colour, by applying that, we can find voltage, if we know those two. If we know those two, we can find resistance, and if we know those two, we can find the current. So we have all the tools at hand to do a calculation. And that is probably the, the hardest bit to describe. Anyway, as I say, I'll, I'll come on to this in bits, in pieces that should be easy to remember, hopefully. If the numbskull can get it, you certainly can, because you've got an advantage over me. Ha <laughs> ha!